This week, Torvalds downplays a security vulnerability. Nothing, nothing new here. Countries lobby for back doors. Google goes public with a Microsoft bug. Apple returns some servers. Uh, a, a creamy IoT teddy bear? Why did I say creamy? A dreamy? A scary? A creepy! It was supposed to be creepy IoT teddy bear. Wow. And two, two factors as well. Jason Wood provides us with some expert commentary on the NSA using cyber attacks for defense. All that and more on this edition of Hacknick News. This is a Security Weekly production. Brought to you by Logarithms Netmon Freemium delivers real-time network visibility to quickly identify emerging threats in your IT environment. Netmon Freemium is a free commercial-grade network forensics and traffic analytics solution. You can use Netmon Freemium's powerful capabilities to search against all observed network traffic, identify abnormal traffic patterns and application usage, and quickly analyze full packet captures. Take the first step towards real-time network visibility. Visit logarithm.com forward slash freemium to learn more and download it today. Do you have a website, an external presence, employees, an office? Any of these things can be compromised and attacked. How are you defending these assets? Have you penetration tested these public assets? Start 2017 by taking a proactive approach to securing your vulnerable areas. Black Hills Information Security has been helping companies find their weaknesses since 2008. Email consulting at blackhillsinfosec.com and see how they can help you sleep better at night. Welcome to Hack Naked News. I'm your host, Paul Asadari, and broadcasting live from G-Unit Studios in Rhode Island, reporting on the security news for Tuesday, February 28th, 2017. Apparently the creamy teddy bear edition? That just sounds wrong. A couple of quick announcements to get us started. The 10th anniversary edition of Source Boston is being held this April, including training sessions on April 24th through the 25th, conference talks on the 26th through the 27th, featuring awesome speakers from the security community. Events will take place in Boston at the Courtyard Marriott downtown, and Security Weekly listeners get a $100 off discount on either the training or conference passes when using the discount code Security Weekly. Visit SourceConference.com for more information. The InfoSec World 2017 conference is being held on April 3rd through the 5th at the Omni Orlando Resort at Champions Gate in Orlando, Florida. Security Weekly listeners receive 10% off the conference or World Pass when using the code OS17-SW. Here talks from Kevin Johnson, Rich Mogul, and Corey Doctorow and more. Visit InfoSecWorld.Misty.com to register today. That's M-I-S-T-I dot com. IT Pro courses now include Cybersecurity Analyst Plus, CCNA CyberOps, ITIL Operation Support and Analysis, Penetration Testing, Networking Plus, and Ethical Hacking V9. IT Pro TV is introducing a new membership level soon. All current premium members will be granted the highest membership level available, so sign up today. Visit itpro.tv forward slash hack naked and use the code HN30 to save 30% off for life. A, the call for papers is open now for B-Sides London, being held on June 7th at the ILEC Conference Center in, well, London, of course. The CFP closes on March 27th, and presenters will be announced on May 1st. They're also looking for presenters in the rookie track, mentors for the rookies in the rookie track, uh, and folks to run workshops. Find out more at securitybsides.com.uk. On to the security news for this week. Uh, recent research dubbed Shattered, co-authored by Google, describes a collision attack in the SHA-1 hashing algorithm. Researchers successfully created a collision that is two different sets of data that share the same cryptographic hash value. Both Git and Subversion have been reported as using SHA-1 to create hash values for source code, which means technically it's possible to upload malicious or backdoor source code that has the same cryptographic hash as 
production and clean source code. However, other security re researchers are quick to point out that the files with the same hash values are flagged by the rep sharing feature uh, in these systems, and at best, it's reported that an attacker can cause issues with rep sharing. Of course, uh, Linus Torvalds chimes in with his typical message on security by stating, the sky isn't falling. In reviewing uh, all of the arguments for the severity of this attack, it's clear that uh, we could talk about the arguments either way all day long. However, we probably should move away from SHA-1 and be certain that we're taking other steps to detect that code is being backdoored. Germany and France have uh, really, in the name of fighting terror, have suggest suggested that, and I quote, Technology companies come up with the impossible encryption systems that are secure, strong, but yet easily crackable by law enforcement on demand. Not much more in the story other than it's a really bad idea as, well, well for privacy, I guess. Uh, which is interesting as the EU has some of the strictest privacy laws in the world, certainly ahead of the U.S. in this department. Google has released details of a zero-day vulnerability in IE11 and the Edge browser. BBC states this bug arises because of the way both programs handle instructions to format some parts of web pages. Thanks for the insightful commentary. Fortunately, Google has released a proof of concept, and if you're into that sort of thing, I know I am, you can go check it out online. Google went public because Microsoft went past the 90-day disclosure or non-disclosure window, whatever you want to call it. The saga continues from basically where we previously reported that Microsoft has just decided to skip Patch Tuesday this month in February 2017. My advice, use Chrome, perhaps, maybe, I don't know. Maybe Microsoft will find a bug in Chrome and, and get back at them. That saga will certainly be continuing, hopefully not for too much longer. Apple's returned some stuff. Like, you ever had to return stuff from Amazon, and it's kind of a pain? Can you imagine Apple having returned servers, Lord knows how many, that are found to have infected firmware uh, operating in the Apple Design Lab? Super Micro reports that Apple has severed its relationship with the hardware provider, and Apple states that no customer data was lost. While Apple's always been kind of weird in dealing with security incidents, uh, essentially providing us little to no information to the public, this is no exception. But props to Apple for uh, discovering it. However, it'd be nice if you, Apple, could share what you found so that others can perform similar investigations, hopefully Super Micro. Uh, takes the lead on that in investing the uh, backdoored firmware and reporting that to its customers. The creepy IoT teddy bear is leaking information. Troy Hunt reported this week that a children's IoT toy device was uh, storing customer databases in a publicly accessible location, happens to be on Amazon's cloud, Troy reported that Spiral Toys used an Amazon-hosted service with no authentication required to store the recordings, customer profile pictures, children's names, and the relationship to their parents, relatives, and friends. This is just one of several flaws in kids' toys, which is really creepy. Before you jump on the IoT Kids band, uh, toy bandwagon, okay, well, you know what? Just don't get on the bandwagon for IoT toys for your kids, like, for a long time until they work out those issues, because it's creepy. Cloudflare was the leading story this week. We probably should have done that one first, but we'll do it last, because that's how we roll. Uh, now, it, uh, basically, this story boils down to, now's a good time to change your password. Cloudflare protected websites and services, including Uber, dating site OkCupid, and Fitbit, have inadvertently been leaking sensitive user data, potentially including passwords and private messages. Some of this data is still floating around, being cached in search engines. While unlikely that your credentials have been leaked, although it is possible, it's probably a good time to change them. Use a password manager, which helps you keep track of them and reduces password reusage, uh, as well as lets you store a really, really good password. Also, combine that with enabling two-factor authentication where possible. Personally, I've been on a mission to enable two-factor auth wherever I can find it, and the mileage varies. Some sites allow me to use a secure token. Others will do this via an SMS two-factor auth. Some support the Google Authenticator app. 
I tend to go back and use all three. Um, with all of the threats against your credentials, you greatly improve the security of your account with two-factor authentication, especially as is the case with your password being leaked uh, somewhere else uh, outside of your control. I believe it's worth the minor inconvenience to do the two-factor off, off. And I know, blah, 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 all the folks who poo-poo two-factor off, whatever. That's all I have to say about that is whatever. And now... Jason Wood joins us to talk about the NSA using cyber weapons. But first, a word from our sponsors. IT Pro TV, an easy, entertaining approach to online IT training. Access over 2,000 hours of up-to-date, high-quality video content live and on-demand via Chromecast, Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple TV, PC, and your mobile device. IT Pro TV's premium membership grants access to all courses, transcripts, virtual labs, and transcender practice exams. Corporate and group pricing are available for a free 7-day trial and 30% off the lifetime of your account. Visit itpro.tv forward slash hacknaked and use the code HN30. Gain control of cyber risk with Tenable IO, the first vulnerability management platform built for today's elastic assets like cloud, containers, and web apps. Discover a fresh asset-based approach that prioritizes vulnerabilities while seamlessly integrating into your environment. And improve ROI with the first elastic licensing approach based on assets, not IP addresses. Tenable IO delivers the data and context you need to secure your elastic attack surface. Start your free Tenable IO trial today by visiting Tenable. Io. Has your network been breached? Cyber Reason can help you answer this question. Cyber Reason products hunt for threats within your network and eliminate them in real time. To Cyber Reason, real time means within seconds. Founded by former military hackers who don't play by the rules, they've built this experience into their platform. Harness ingenuity and imagination, not just code, to defeat attackers. Cyber Reason, disrupt the adversary and let the hunt begin. Welcome back to Hack Naked News. I'm here with Jason Wood to talk about NSA using cyber weapons. Jason, welcome to the show. Hey, Paul. How's it going? Ah, excuse me. It's good. Yeah. So what's going on with the NSA? <laughs> <laughs> So this was a uh, this was from a blog post actually made last week by Bruce Schneier. And the title of it is NSA using cyber attack for defense. The opening lines, he says, these days it's rare to learn something new from the Snowden documents. But Ben Buchanan, the author of a book named The Cybersecurity Dilemma, Hacking Trust and Fear Between Nations, uh, apparently had something that, that caught his eye. And then this is a quote from Mr. Schneier, where he says, the NSA penetrates enemy networks in order to enhance our defensive capabilities. I'll be honest, my reaction was... That's not particularly surprising. <laughs> well, um, no, it's not new. In the, the documentary film, uh, Zero Days, uh, definitely chronicles. I mean, take that movie for what it's worth. Form your own opinions about it. But they, uh, in that film, describe uh, methods that the NSA uses to do exactly that. Penetrate company uh, countries, maybe even companies, probably companies within countries, to... Basically, gain a foothold uh, and potentially use that either for defense or attack, right? I mean, if you can, if there is an attack happening and through cyber means disrupt that attack, then, I mean, that's offense being used for defense, I guess. I don't know. What's your take on it, Jason? So, yeah, that was another good source of, of, of information about that is uh, James Bamford has a couple of books out about the NSA, one being The Puzzle Palace. A little bit dated technology in here is referring back to the 60s, 70s, and stuff like that. But the NSA has a long history of attacking adversaries, other countries, to help defend the country, our country. So whether that is done through computers or, or what have you, that's, that's their goal. Um, so some of the interesting things that they found, or that uh, Mr. Buchanan put, has in his book, is he talks about um, the NSA's... Uh, well, under their operations, they, they penetrated a network and they found things like information about future targets that were planned to be attacked by some of our adversaries, uh, bios of senior White House officials, defense contractors, employees, things like that. Uh, they also ran across source code and tools that were uh, going to be used or were being used by uh, these adversaries. And then they were able to turn that around and plug that into their network 
to either respond to it or you know look for signs of it or or what have you. I know it's a little light on details and exactly how that got used, but you know it's an example of hey we found this stuff let's feed it into what we're doing now to to do some defense. One of the things that I thought was interesting as well uh, as part of being in there and we talk about threat intelligence in in our field. Um, one of the things the NSA did as part of penetrating these networks was was trying to find out what is the intent of some of these these adversaries that we have out there. So, okay, well, fine, we found that they have some future targets. We hear some source code and tools and stuff like that. Why are they doing this? What's their goal? And, you know, that has some impact on how we would potentially respond to it. If you're going to use it to some kind of tool to, oh, I don't know, black out the eastern United States, that's totally different than uh, get some economic information or, or, or whatnot to, uh, to try and improve your economy and get a little bit of a jump on things. So go ahead, Paul. Yeah, I just, you know, I, I think this is just the nature of business. I think it's really the uh, evolution of spying, essentially, uh, before you had to deploy people right? Because there was no, there was no internet, there was no networks. So you deploy people to spying in, in relay information back. Now uh, we're going to use computers in the internet and collect that same uh, level of information. And it sounds like in this context, it is just uh, information gathering. And it, it'd be curious to see what kind of regulations, if any, are put in place for spying. Like no one puts regulations in place to limit countries spying on each other. And if they do, they're largely ignored. Countries have been spying on each other since the beginning of time. And now in, the, uh, in this age, we talk about, well, how cyber war or the usage of the digital means to disrupt uh, an enemy's network, that is largely still unregulated, similar to nuclear weapons, right? How there was, you know, arms treaties and things like that. We don't see that uh, for cyber. But I think it's important, and I think the, the article kind of makes me think about it in a way that um, spying is always going to happen. Um, how some of these tools and tactics are used to disrupt may come under some kind of treaty. I mean, there already have been some uh, handshaking agreements with China uh, in the Obama administration. So uh, I think we'll see a clear delineation. Uh, essentially, I think three-letter government agencies hopefully are, co are collaborating with each other, right? as the NSA gets information, hopefully it's being shared. We've had those issues in the past in the U.S. that have come to light. Um, hopefully it's being shared, but I think that it's definitely different from trying to disrupt an enemy's uh, system from just spying on them. And I think spying is going to, I mean, it's why it's called spying, right? You're supposed to do it without exactly. anyone knowing. Uh, and it's interesting uh, that it was included in the Snowden leaks because the whole point of spying is to not let your enemy know that you're spying. And some of the things that these leaks accomplish are, you know, giving that away to our enemies. So, right. But I, I don't think anybody is surprised. Uh, any of our adversaries would be surprised that the NSA is doing this. They are a spy agency. That's that's, that's their do. That's their charter. Um, and so yeah, they're going to go out and try and collect information, however they can get at it. I think as far as regulations, I mean, you might find some formal treaties or whatever. Okay, we're not going to do this or that. Um, but I, I would not be surprised to find out uh, that uh, maybe some of the countries have some unwritten rules, you know, in how they do some things where, look, we won't do this if you won't do that. Mm -hmm. And we'll, you know, kind of a... You would hear about it during the Cold War, where it's some between the CIA and and the KGB, they had some unwritten rules of yeah, we're going to largely leave the spouses alone of of people and stuff like that because mm -hmm. it just causes problems. Right. Uh, people get pissed off, so you could probably see some kind of corollary popping up in that. Um, regardless, I, I I thought some of the things were interesting here. They did list off some concrete examples of, hey, here's how we gathered up this information and turned around and used it and in actuality. So that's kind of cool to check out. But overall, uh, I don't think this is a huge surprise that uh, that this is what the NSA does. and um, and then they've actually gotten some some useful stuff out of it. Well, it's great. I, I certainly learned of some uh, resources that uh, I can go read to get more information about uh, about this topic, which is really cool. And I hope our listeners, uh, you know, take away the same thing. 
uh, take the movies with a grain of salt. Take the books with everything with a grain of salt on this topic, right? Um, but it's cool that there's other resources out there. So go check out the article. It's posted in our wiki at wiki.securityweekly.com where there's an archive of all the information talked about on our various shows on the Security Weekly Network. Jason Wood, thank you very much for coming on this edition of Hack Naked News. Thanks, everyone, for listening and watching. We'll see everyone next time.